What's going on, everybody? Welcome to On Screen Live. My name is Andrew Jupin, and welcome to the first post Barbenheimer edition of On Screen Live. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, depending upon where you're getting the show this fine day. Uh, and you know, uh, welcome into the uh, the chat here. Who we got? Uh, Winnet Shan, Nick B, Michael Brooks. Uh, let's see, Ariana, uh, Leah M T, Daniel Schumacher. Tata Hababa, how's everybody doing this fine day? Hope you had a good uh, movie-going weekend or a movie-watching weekend at home, perhaps. Uh, see, we got some uh, big ones up front here. The birthdays, happy birthday, Laura Layton. You know her as Sydney Andrews on Melrose Place, of course. Rose Byrne, the star of Insidious, The Red Door. Happy 74th birthday to Michael Richards, if you can even believe it. And check out this one. 83 years old, Mr. Dan Hedaya today. I uh, did my best to find a picture of him smiling, and that's as close as you're going to get. Uh, but speaking of dude smiling, got my four best buds here to talk about what went on all over the box office this weekend. Coming in first, you know him, you love him, Mr. Eric Siska. Oh, my. You know, those birthdays, what a, what an achievement. Soon enough, you're going to have to change some of them to tombstones. We'll do those <laughs> updates. Yeah, death dates, dude. I mean, 83, 74, getting up there. Getting up there, getting up there. Uh, speaking of getting up there, the old man himself, Stephen Sadak. Getting up there, getting close. I uh, just want to. <laughs> we're all talking. We're we're doll crazy this weekend, and I, I wanted to show one of my favorite toys. And oh, honestly, like, could you imagine if they ever made a Spider-Man movie? Could you? Well, that would that, that would. I think that crazy. would do Buko Bucks. <laughs> oh, Buko Bucks. Oh, I bet yeah. it's nuts. They haven't thought of that yet. <laughs> I mean, that's like at least a million dollars right there. At least one million dollars at least. What's what's the actual number? It's like there's 20 movies with Spider-Man now. <laughs> at least. Yeah, three At Raimis, least. two Garfields, three and I mean the, the number Archers of actors, in a pear tree, two and the, num the number of actors that have played Spider Man at this point. Oh yeah, with all these blah 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 Spider Verses, you've got like you're you're the dozens, <laughs> dozens of people, dozens. Uh, hey, speaking of dozens of people, here's somebody who knows dozens of people. Chris Cabin, Field of Dreams is a crock, a kinder, gentler crock. If the Reagan era was Eisenhower too, this picture this picture could be construed as the opening salute of the Bush era, Eisenhower three. If Whoa. I could have any job on this planet, uh -huh. it would be to kick Kevin Costner in the nuts mm -hmm. every wow. day for the rest of my life. I dream hey, about Chris, it sometimes, Chris, Chris. and that's what. Excuse me. Did Pauline Kale live to see the release of The Postman? Do you know, Chris? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I probably because she'd but, really be wanting to smash. Nuts. I think it was. I think she was there till like maybe '99. Is think. that right? Let's I, see. I think I'm. I, I'm not entirely sure. I wish uh, Reagan and Bush were Eisenhower two and three. That would have been better <laughs> was, than what we got. That was actual quoting from Pauline Kale. I'm not that sharp. Of course, Whoa. she's posting her L's in that book. Huh? How about this? Pauline Kale died less than a week before 9-11. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Right under 3rd. the door. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Well, I got to check, was... check those flight logs. That seems a little too convenient. <laughs> she got to heaven and it got really smoky a week later. She was good. Oh, she was always good on. with the last line. So I think that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, we got a lot to get to today, of course, gang. And uh, the big thing, of course, is the American box office this week. Let's take a look at it in a segment we like to call Highest Gross. All right. Um, got uh, no surprises here, as it turns out, but uh, some interesting things moving on the on the board here. First up at five, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny still hanging on. Uh, what are we talking here in its fourth week? So a month with Indy, another six point seven million. This thing has know. just disintegrated from my memory at this point. Mm. I, I I can't I, like I, I I remember Mads Mikkelsen with the video game face. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I remember a, cool... a lot more than that. But yeah, yeah, I love playing that demo level at the start. You, know, <laughs> <laughs> you lost today, kid. It doesn't mean you have to like it. Hey, make a video game. It looked pretty good. Yeah. 
that for would a be video game. Open world Indiana Jones game. I'd like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Totally. yeah. Um, hey, you know what? Also, be an open world video game coming in at number yes. four Sound of Freedom. Woo! Uh, <laughs> you did it, everyone. Still. Well, oh, actually, man. it is an open world video game if you're totally insane, which yeah, most right. of the people who enjoy that film <laughs> that's are. Right. I guess that's, that's right. True. Getting all sorts of bonus points for running up to terrified parents in the grocery store and mm -hmm. accusing them of being abductors yeah. of their own. You've got children. to abduct children in order to stop the abduction of children. Well, it's simple. It's, really, it's a good point. Money laundering needs a dump point. So you have to understand that companies like Big Bazooka Coffee or uh, maybe I'll shoot my wife clothing line. Uh, you know, these these people need to put their money places and sound sure. of freedom buying out these theaters and making sure people can go and see the message that you should fantasize about stopping uh, uh, kidnapping. It's yep. great. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I, I see it. I understand why. What, it would, what would Pauline Kale think? <laughs> oh. Dude, well, I mean, it would it would have been it would have been kicked down to one of the lowlier film critics right, at the times yeah. if that yeah, were the yeah. case. Yeah, Rupert <laughs> Spud working for the uh, <laughs> the New Yorker or New York Times. I love that guy. You have plenty of time to fantasize about uh stopping child abductions when you're alone at Thanksgiving. So there's that's true. I mean you need <laughs> something to hold on to. When you are eating a Boston market chicken for Thanksgiving, uh yeah. Anyway, uh, here we go. So now we get into the interesting stuff here. Uh, he jumped off a mountain in the movie, and uh, the box office fell down a mountain in the second week, unfortunately, for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Take a look at this, folks. We're talking wow. uh, $19.5 million. This represents a 64% fall from last week, which mm -hmm. was inevitable. You are, you know, it's a similar they audience. You know. Should have put it out earlier this summer. Yep. Uh, they just did not expect, I don't think, the Oppenheimer juggernaut. I mean, you know, you no. knew Barbie was going to be big, but Oppenheimer. And Barbie helped. Uh, they, the, the, the one hand washed the other with this cultural phenomenon that is Barbenheimer. A lot of people yes. were, yes. were right. doing that. And I love it. Yeah. They were, I mean, yeah, you, you wish you were going up against the Haunted Mansion because that... <laughs> Yes. Barbie is gonna Barbie and Oppenheimer. I think are gonna have a nice, smooth second week. Sure. Yeah. And the other thing is, this might have a better third week too. Sure. Uh, you know, you'll see what happens there. And the funny thing is, too, this movie was still on more screens than Barbie and Oppenheimer. Um, and that's just this business gang. That's the way that works. Mm -hmm. uh, so moving right along, Oppie. There he is. Mm -hmm. Love him. I'm going to become one of those annoying um, James Cameron guys. Like, you don't bet against him. I'm going to be that for Nolan now. <laughs> oh, really? Don't That's bet against him, bro. <laughs> uh, we're looking here at $80.5 million, which is wild. For a uh, drama. Yes. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. It's a, a three-hour drama. That's Biographical a, drama. There is, is a... Please. You upset? No, we're back. The movies are fully, fully, fully back. Um, forty-seven percent of this box office represented uh, premium large format screens, so your big Dolby theaters, your Regal RPX is kind of a deal. I was and seeing... hang on, Go ahead. IMAX twenty-six percent of the total, which is two times the average percentage for box office related to how much of the IMAX portion it is. Go ahead, Chris. I, I was seeing that people were like looking at uh, their local IMAXs and their seventy millimeter places. And like they were sold out through the second week of August, like well, yeah. those screenings, like certain. Yeah. I'm sure it's not like across the board. I'm sure those are just meaty times right after work, yeah, uh, and right. stuff like that. But like, still, for something to be carrying that kind of weight at this point, and like I, somebody brought this up, uh, no, you gotta wonder if we were like up and running when Tenet came out. Does that thing just blow everything out of I the water? I think it would have done well, but it would have been maybe... Like, and that would probably did really well opening, and then it would have had a fall-off from perhaps bad word of mouth. Yeah, because people would, have, a, would have, yeah, people yeah. would have then watched it, you see, and then been like, well, what the fuck is that? Well, of course, we're on, upset. On, on, with different sides, much like the Tenet boys, we're on different sides here. <laughs> <laughs> Steve is with the Brana crowd. Yeah, so I'm uh, running this way, he's running that way. But like it did, it's that that movie split the audience. Like yep. people, half people were like, "That's amazing." I don't know what the fuck it's about, but it's amazing. And half people were like, "That's bullshit." 
Uh, yeah. I, I think you might have gotten a really big showing if we yeah. were up and running. Oh, it definitely would have done much better. I mean, because I mean, like this this guy, people, his movies are events. People want yeah, yeah. to see them. Oh, dude, yeah, all the fucking neck beards are out yesterday. Let mm-hmm. me tell you, don't worry about I, it. You know <laughs> how many directors can command that anymore? It's pretty yeah. impressive. It's a very very small list. Yeah. Um, and then so here we go, gang. Kaboom! No surprises. Barbie. The number one movie in America right now. Look at this. $155 million. Insane. Uh, on that's, pretty pandy. A... that's pretty pandy numbers. It is. That is. And, and for a comedy, this yes. is like unheard of. This yes. is yes. a huge, huge, huge. It is... Hopefully there's comedies in the future now, maybe. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is like sort of like the biggest of big box kinds of comedies. But it's a comedy all the same. Uh, and let's see other things about it. You know, highest grossing female directed film of all time. Sure. $337 million globally. And it beat out Mario Brothers for the biggest uh, weekend of the year. And also we should say, this was the biggest box office take, uh, the fourth largest weekend of all time in the United States. $302 million at the box office. We're back. For for what I, I have to say is an incredibly weird movie. Yeah. Like yeah. A, yeah, a, yeah. a genuinely strange thing. If you look, it's not a kid's movie. I, I don't think you could argue that. Like it has those elements, but it's for something this off out there. I, I, I was shocked. Oh, obviously. yeah. Even I mean, with these numbers, because it's—I mean, it was—it's it, people wanted something fresh, and people and women wanted something fresh. You know what I mean? Something marketed towards them that actually that they had a real emotional bond with. You know what I mean? That that they grew up with and all that <laughs> stuff. And like, we really play into male nostalgia a lot. We very. I, I, you know, th- there's a lot of like false, you know, wait, why don't we ever make movies for women? We just made Joyride. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, that's not exactly true. Mm-hmm. But I do think that there's like something to be said about actual female nostalgia versus the male nostalgia that we get a lot of. And it's very that true. Yeah. And ambition, I think. Yep. I, I, like, I think Barbie's a very ambitious movie on every scale and like no smoke to Joyride whatsoever. But no, like, no. that's a very a movie we've seen a hundred times before yes. and like in different forms and like they they seem to be doing it with a very good cast so you know see but my male nostalgia is for 1945 (laughs) (laughs) yeah dude well i mean what dude this you know oppie marlo like yeah (laughs) Yeah, 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 it totally it totally totally. makes sense your favorite nostalgia dude yeah (laughs) gramp into the streets man Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll talk about it more when we talk about the movie in a little bit but i was genuinely surprised that like they got away with that aesthetic getting put out for such a major motion picture sure and just the way that it plays i was sitting there like i can't believe this got released not in a bad way i i will go on to tell you in a few minutes that i liked the movie but i was genuinely surprised that it was a movie released the way you know as is like that's how it came to theaters it was very surprising um so yes much more talk about that uh, in the minutes to come uh, but you know we're gonna be we're gonna be off the air here. You know uh, this is the the finale of uh, on screen live before we get to our summer break. And um, you know there's a lot of movies that are gonna come out in August and beyond. So you know those movies will be releasing, but also trailers for other movies will be releasing at the same time. So there's gonna be a lot to catch up on in September. But for now, got a couple here that we want to keep track of in a uh, cleverly titled segment we've deemed trailer segment. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So we got two uh, coming up here, gang, that uh, we're very, um, well, excited for one. We'll see about the other one here. Uh, where are we with all my tech stuff here? So no poster yet, but I just... <laughs> That's this better picture, than a poster. Yeah. This picture yeah. of Giamatti is kind of all you yeah. want. Yeah, so good. Look at, look at that guy. Oh, boy, right there. Lord, I want him to yell at me. <laughs> He's got it, dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I saw uh, this trailer. Yeah, I'm excited. Yes. I'm yeah, me too. Excited. It's you know what is awesome about this movie? It's being released in no fucking November. Get your scarves on and let's fucking Thank let's you. just deal with dramas and sh- you know the <laughs> I'm still upset that uh you hurt my feelings was released in the summer. Absolutely something that should have been released. I needed a scarf for that movie. I needed mm-hmm. a hot <laughs> cup of coffee. This is this is what I want. Oh, that's an inside movie, big time. Mm-hmm. 
what you wanted you want it's a an autumn movie for the jennifer lawrence sex comedy you needed a sweater for that no you hurt my feelings oh, uh, the, you hurt, oh I, I heard no hard feelings Excuse oh no yes me. no yes the no that that's just you know these like talky thinky indie dramas this is this is fall weather my friend we got to talk about the Holof center movie. yeah we yeah, got to put it we got to put out a cardigan at least this, um, at least for right now, is 1027 Limited from Focus Features and then November 10th wide. Uh, we will see. We got um, the Luca Guadagnino already changed dates because of the strike. That's now getting dumped in like April or March or something. Oh, Jesus. Kinda. That's uh, th Three's a Crowd. Is that one? Uh, that, that, yeah, yes, yeah, that's yeah, the yes. movie Three's a Crowd. That's <laughs> <laughs> correct. <team. laughs> uh, okay, so we got uh, the new one from Alexander Payne, his re teaming with Paul Giamatti. All you guys uh, ready on your end to uh, start mm -hmm. it up? Oh, yeah. All right. The oh, holdovers yeah. in three, two, one, go. <laughs> We don't need a trailer for the Damn trailer it. for this. No, we Damn do it. Not. That's stupid. Oh, man. Him playing a dickhead teacher. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And I just Which, love that 70s, early 80s vibe where he yes. got going here. It's really, really yeah. nice. Yep. Well, I mean, he was a teacher in Sideways, but we didn't watch him teach. You know, it was no, him, to him interacting with children. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just tells that kid to read at the end. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I love this horror narrator guy too. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this uh, this winter, Paul Giamatti is getting stuffed for Thanksgiving. <laughs> the wandering eye, it'll find you. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, just prick teacher, role of a lifetime. I'm gonna ask uh, Alexander Payne, super fan. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, <laughs> what was the last Alexander Payne movie? Was that? Uh, downsizing. Was it downsizing? Oh, oh wow! I did not watch it. It's good. Not. It's no, really it's good. I I, I, oh, I, wow. I like it quite a lot. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. Split room. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that is it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, because it's, it's been a while, and this is like obviously like as returned to form as you can get. Yes. yes. You, you got you got Big Paul here. Thankfully, billions let him go. I think he does have a collar. On his, on his, on his, <laughs> on his, on his, he's got an anklet that Bing, Billions needs to know where he is. Yes, but he's allowed to be in this movie. I can't get too far away from the Showtime offices. <laughs> does it, he actually wears a bondage collar in Billions at one point? Right? Oh, no, does yes, he? he does. I think it was oh, the yeah. first episode. I, I, I didn't really it. watch it. it, it but, it's it's uh, a continuing storyline. Yeah, he's into some erotic stuff. Ooh, good it's for pretty him. wild. I mean, this is essentially Alexander Payne's Wonder Boys. Yes. yes, right. Yeah. Yes, which I nothing also, wrong with that, movie. dude. Wonderful That's a great movie. Fucking movie. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, yeah, this movie absolutely fully could have made been made twenty years ago, and I'm here yeah. for that. Honestly. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh man. You yeah, don't know the writer, but that's that's great. I love that that's the way great. it holds on the end there. Right, yeah. yeah. Just, they're <laughs> trying to make it look like film. Yeah, I left a bunch of pillows under a blanket. Hopefully, billions doesn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, yesterday uh, when I caught Oppie, mm. uh, this love was Oppie. this was in front of it. Yes, yep. and same. I, I got to tell you, I was front row IMAX. Paul Giamatti's huge frozen face like that. I was clapping <laughs> in the theater, dude. I was clapping. Um, so, yeah, if this doesn't get moved where it's placed now, that's mm. fall festival stuff. So that could be TIFF. That could be New York Film Festival. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, fingers crossed uh, nothing gets changed up with this one. Uh, but I'm, I'm pumped for it. And, yeah, I just I did double check his IMDb, and uh, it was downsizing was last. Before that was Nebraska. Oh, yeah. And uh, Descendants, which I think are both great. Yeah, I don't know. Nebraska I only saw downsizing once at Toronto, I, and I didn't care for it. I, I get people's reservations with it, and I get people's problems with it. It's not a, a, it's not an e a one that I'm like, oh, why doesn't everybody love this? That's the like, one where they make the people little... Yes. yes. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah. like it was just I was like, oh, Alexander Payne's doing like pseudo kind of like fantastical sort of stuff. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. Um. So that's probably because you know it was one of those I wasn't expecting that to do that. Um. But this I don't know. this one does seem much more in the Nebraska register. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To me, definitely. 
Uh, so also what I think you could argue is on the Nebraska register, <laughs> the Marvels. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I should say, folks, I, for I forgot to mention a second ago for the last one. But if you're watching along, you can uh, find the links to these in the show description uh, right below here on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, the Marvels. It goes wide the same day uh, that the Alexander Payne goes wide. Which wow. Is interesting. Let's yeah. get a, uh, what was it, a Marvel Overs going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, the the Marvel Overs. Marv Overs. <laughs> there it is. Marv Overs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <getting> Marved Over. <laughs> uh, I do think this, uh, this is really a sequel to the absolute cultural phenomenon that is secret invasion i i mean oh i can't you course. can't you can't go to the deli without people talking about it people no, it's love insane. this stuff they this love it open lukewarm in a 70 yeah, percent drop in the second weekend <laughs> hey, uh, look yeah. look dozens and dozens of people have fallen asleep to secret invasion <laughs> and you can't argue with those numbers you can mm -hmm. i'm i'm now officially not caught up like i was watching yeah. it every week it's like on thursdays i would check strange new worlds out and then I'd begrudgingly watch Secret Invasion. And last week, I just watched Strange New Worlds. And I was like, let's go play Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> better use of time. Incredible. Uh, uh, you know, I don't want to. But yeah, I think Zelda is a much better use of time than whatever that thing it's is. It's just so fucking boring and shouldn't exist. But yes, nah. this is, I guess, the follow up to that. Yeah. Uh, from Nia DaCosta. I'm glad she's, you know, getting gigs and whatnot. Hey. But just whatever. Cash uh, and checks. Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, so, all right, here we go. The the first feature length trailer for the Marvels in three, two, one, go. That's a spaceship. <laughs> that is a spaceship. <laughs> I don't care for this intergalactic uh, remix we're using throughout this. Oh yeah, we're having oh, fun with that. Don't care I didn't even it. notice it yet. Yeah. But yeah, there it is. Is this a new trailer or have I? Because I think I've seen this before. There's, there's been this is, a, a, this is another a version one. of this. Okay, yes. Okay. The, the family I mean, like... annihilator, did she say? <laughs> uh, excuse me? I mean, I think I like that first Captain Marvel movie, and I, I do like Brie Larson as this character. Yeah. I didn't see this Ms. Marvel, even though I like the comics, and then the WandaVision Marvel. Woman. Yeah, I would just like a sequel Rambo. to Captain Marvel. Yes. I don't, I don't want to know nice. about these other people. I don't want to know about Secret Invasion. I don't give a fuck. It well, seems a little. They're like they didn't trust it, so they're like, let's just cram for, a bunch. Also, yeah. forever, forever expansion. Never, yes. you right. can't. Nothing can let lie. Everything has to be expanded. It's so. like if you're a fan of this thing, you'll come to this. If you're a fan of this thing, you'll come to this. Like the Avengers when they finally, yeah. you know. Well, that's the thing. Is like if you're a fan of. WandaVision, but not the other stuff, you'll watch this. Yes. If you only watch Ms. Marvel and not the other stuff, you'll watch this. Oh, yeah. It's a team oh. up, baby. Oh, it changes everything. Wow. Okay. Everything, dude. Finally. It's changing everything. Yeah, and then you know someone bangs the staff, and purple magic comes out of it, <laughs> just like every other fifty-one of these Pretty movies. Pretty much. I think the vel. I think the the villain is from Velvet Buzzsaw. Okay, that's. I'll have to, I'll have to take your word on that, dude. I think so. That's it. It's trying to play, sir. This CGI also looks like all the other uninteresting Marvel CGI. Uh, well, and especially since they're doing so much like Marvel television, what distinguishes this from what I'm watching in, on TV, you know, in a way? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, uh, you know why? Because it's not just people sitting in a room talking to each other. There's actually, <laughs> okay, there yeah. seems to be actual Maybe, action, which is right, kind of exciting. That's fair. It's different yeah. than Secret Invasion. There's superheroes <laughs> being superly heroic, which seems exciting. <laughs> There's a cat with tentacles that yes. eats things. That's pretty cool. I do cool. like that. I think that was in the cool. first movie. Yes, mm -hmm. it was. It's one of the better things about the first movie, I think. It was, yeah. The cat should get a movie. Yes. yes. Come on. Look, you got these this Strays movie. I don't need it. You give me tentacle mouth cat. I don't remember its name. I'm sure it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful but the, cat. The, the 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 cat thing was like funny as like the reveal of that's how Nick Fury lost yeah. his eye. But like, why are we bringing that back? It's you know, it's just like because you remember you remember the things you maybe laughed at the last exactly. time. Exactly. Like look at our recent episode in American Pie Two. It's yeah. Just do right. exactly what worked the last time. Yes. 
And it's just so stunning yeah. that I mean, Marvel. You just think about it. This Blade movie is is now DOA. It seems now that Mahershal has walked, and you can wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hang on. He that did happen. Um, did I make that up? Did I dream that? Am I not? He walked out of walked. there. I thought he was. I, uh, I, I mean, you could be right. I don't know. You, you're uh, probably right. You know this stuff more than I do, anyway. Looking it up now. Um, we can let's continue with the show, but I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll tie back in. I mean, I, I know that it got, it got bumped because of the strike and everything like that okay right? maybe maybe that was one of those like he's very frustrated as of september yeah i don't know i, I just maybe as far as i know he's still attached to it but they okay. moved it to like 25 God. so yeah no because mm -hmm. uh, they can't even make it right now um yeah i don't know we'll see with those movies but if you're marvel right now and you're looking at like what this weekend was yep. and you know if you're i should say you're disney you know and your company was nowhere near either of these movies, you know. And also, if you're Paramount too, you're kind of like, eh, we tried with Tom, but like, if you're Disney man, you're fucking sweating it right now. Um, also, I think one yeah. of the things with Mission Impossible, I think it would have done better had it had not been for Top Gun Maverick, which was in theaters forever. Yep. So I feel like a lot of people were like, well, I just saw the big Tom Cruise movie, and there's another one sure. already. Yeah, yeah. entirely possible. Yeah. Um, also, it was like a movie you'd been hearing about forever because of the pandemic delays. Yes. So it's that, like, that's oh, well. that's finally out, you know. Mm. Um, all right, y'all. So let's get into it here. We uh, we all experienced uh, Barbenheimer this weekend. I did the double feature. I think Eric, you did. Uh, you other guys, you did not. That's right. No. Yeah, I did. Uh, Friday, we did uh, Barbie, and just last night, we did Oppenheimer. Uh -huh. I did Oppenheimer on Thursday. I saw Barbie yesterday. Cool. Uh, so we, we've all watched all of these. One of those rare weeks where we all got to the theater, which is great. So, Andrew, uh, so what yeah. order did you go in, though? Since we're the only B oh, Barbenheimer sure. bros, which order did you go into? So uh, I did uh, Barbie first. Chelsea and I went and saw Barbie. And then I went uh, to Oppenheimer by myself because she's a well-adjusted human being that was mm. like i'm just gonna go home and see it another time <laughs> and i was like i gotta do both i have to uh, uh, me and my yeah. wife did oppenheimer first then barbie mm. so that's interesting man what you know i'm kind of curious because like seeing barbie first yeah it was like you know you had the laughs and everything and then you went into mm -hmm. This soul crushing, terrifying, infuriating movie. I had the opposite. No, way, actually. I <laughs> oh, thought, oh, is that right? I thought it was <laughs> Oppenheimer was hilarious. I was <laughs> banging my knee, and then I went into this. Uh, his wife's drinking again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That fucking gust of wind taking off Einstein's hat was still funny in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I love that. Uh, but so, you know, Barbie here, I think we might be a, a scotch split on. I'll, I'll jump out and say, I think it's very funny. It's probably the funniest thing I've seen all year. Um, I thought, uh, uh, you know, Greta did a great job pulling this all together because like, I will say, I, when I remember hearing, like, I think back to when I heard Greta Gerwig Barbie movie, I was like, oh, just what in the fuck? brooklyn hipster shit is this but like she she totally fucking pulled it off i couldn't believe it um thought it was very funny i will say i think it sort of trips over itself trying to do its best to make everybody happy and winds up doing this like pseudo south park like everybody was a bit wrong which i don't think it needs to do um mm -hmm. tr trying to trying to explain that without like spoiling too much yeah like, yeah. It's just like I think there was a little too much Ken catering. Um, <laughs> that's that's just me. But Gosling, man, I mean, I knew the guy oh, yeah. could do comedy, but he's he. I'm sorry, he's the funniest fucking part of this movie. He stole it for me. I mean, he's really I, funny. I, oh, yeah. I, I I loved it. Uh, I'm probably I did. I also had issues with how it ended. Uh, I think I'm gonna see it again, uh, and I think. I, to me, it is dealing with a lot of the same things that uh, Asteroid City is dealing with, like the reconciling of making big stylized movies that don't really look or act like real life uh, mm -hmm. when you have uh, you're dealing with decline, uh, real decline in real life, like for a lot of people and for the country in general. Like, I, I think these are that that's what's interesting about the way they mix the uh 
like going into the real world part I, again i don't want to give too much away about the thing but like probably going into the real world quote unquote like uh -huh. stuff like that i think deals with that in a way that was interesting to me on top of all of the incredible design uh the humor which i did i think everybody the design, was in it the production design the set yeah, design insane. it was yeah that's what really blew me away about this movie i thought it was funny as well i do think that the ending they didn't really stick it um but it's kind of kind of a hard thing to adapt anyway and i think yeah. they did a good job considering all of that yeah i mean I, I think that a it's it's a great movie that exists honestly like it was really cool you know seeing all of these all these groups of friends and people again this movie wasn't i don't have the the nostalgia for the product that other folks do so it's not for me i'm not ben shapiro being like, why the fuck did this happen you know That's what i mean like oh you mean the internet's loser. biggest loser this morning exactly. the fucking it's, capital oh, l it's, loser oh, it's, it's okay. did, did andrew drag you to see it did you <laughs> my drag producer you? dragged me <laughs> he put me in his little pocket and dragged me all the way over it <laughs> no I'm, but you know what i mean like so i don't have the nostalgia for it and it, it's okay for a movie not to be entirely for you i did find it really funny i do think that the production design's incredible i think gosling robbie simu lose really good in this I, oh yeah i'm happy is. to see simu Lu do some stuff yes he was great i still like and him. it is uh this array is really good there's a lot of like standouts i just think that the movie is really overworked the script is tripping over itself kind of andrew you pointed at it there's a moment in the movie where i think margot robbie says something to the effect of like i don't feel very pretty it's been a couple of days apologies that i saw opera number two i don't feel very pretty or something like that and then immediately the intermittent always you know always know the script's good when they have a narrator sometimes but not always helen mirren has to show up and be like well you'd know that'd be better if it wasn't coming from margot robbie like it's just it's 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 anticipating people getting upset about certain things and or anything that might be a stray hair. It's like, let's cu cut it immediately. I think that that is an impulse that that movie has that I wish it didn't. It's a, okay. It felt very self-conscious to me uh, about falling all these ways. It 100% is, but I will say, at least for me, that time, that joke worked really well because i was sitting in the theater like what are you fucking stupid and then yeah. helen mirren says that and i was like all right you're at least you're hanging a hat on that one because it's like sure. the most obvious of all those i'll say as much as i think he's fucking hilarious and like is a total legend at this point all of the will ferrell mattel stuff did not work for me at all and i think one of the reasons is for whatever reason they decided that the way that the Mattel office world functions is the same way as Barbie land versus yeah. the real world. Like you see other parts of the real world and like Venice beach and other like parts of LA and whatever. And everyone's acting like we act in society more or less. And then whatever, re you know, for whatever reason, like Will Ferrell and all those Mattel guys are play like the way that they mine the humor from it yep. is they have them act like fucking aliens from outer space yeah. in a way and that i was just kind of like i this was like a step too far it had me laughing at parts but i think overall having them act and function that way did not work that's an interesting point because if they were more like regular people and if they got into the you know go to the barbie land or whatever mm. it would have been interesting to see that kind of fish out of water yeah. thing versus right a fish and fish i don't i don't, I don't think that the, the the rules of the world are ever really well established which is a script that's problem. Fair. you know what i mean like what there's a part when Kristen. uh well i'm sorry uh weird barbie uh, played by uh, kate mckinnon kate mckinnon is like oh yeah. There's going to be a portal rift in the world if you don't fix it, and blah, blah, blah. And I never see or understand what that could even possibly But at the same be. time, I wouldn't want them to be trying to stop a portal because I've seen no, so it, many movies stopping a portal. For sure. But yes. but then why, then yeah. why say it? It's kind of but the, I yeah, mean, that's I mean, I think that leans into the reading of it as like the script itself is like the way that a, a, a young child makes up a story for their Barbie like sure i mean there there have been numerous readings of that in that way and i think that is that lends itself to that way and it lets that lets them get away with all the stuff they're trying to do which See, is like way too much way way too much but i prefer that to not trying sure. uh much at all it, it is that, it is a very ambitious movie for yeah. sure and it, that, it, it, that, it does land a lot of those things yeah. that reading chris i would think is a little more legitimate if you didn't have the america ferrera and the daughter part because that part doesn't function like that mm -hmm. so you can't say that the whole movie is doing that because they don't well act, I mean, that's I, not a part that like a I, little I, girl would recreate with her dolls like oh my fucking overworked depressed mother 
and me the angsty teen like you're not playing that part but like i think that's part of what i was meaning when like you're reconciling things like how do you keep on having a life like barbie's life where that is how it's set yeah. out and that is how it exists versus something like that with sasha in the middle uh that yeah. i think that is what it's dealing with and like again i don't think I'm not sure if there would be a satisfying ending to a movie like this. Yeah. I don't know if it exists. And, Probably and not. Yeah. And, and like for something this big, for the trying as much as it does, like I, I really don't know if you could ever land this plane. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, it's, and it's really funny and it's really, I mean, it looks really great. And I think that a lot of great performances and there's no, that, again, I'm not throwing stones at the flick and I yeah. hope I'm glad people enjoyed it. And I think it's an important movie for people to enjoy because it's, it's, that's their, that's your movie. You should enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I liked all the music in it. I like how like we are stopping at least twice in the movie. No, maybe like three times for like some real, like honest to goodness, old fashioned, like studio yeah. musical number kind for of sure. uh, sequences, which I thought were really great. I think that's when it excelled the most. I yeah. feel like we should have leaned into that a little bit more and maybe even trimmed down the runtime. Yes. I, I, a little bit, but I, I will say dream my now dream. I know Bar- Barbenheimer not bad not bad but my uh-huh. dream double feature is barbie and southland tales <laughs> put them together baby that'd be a great they've got very si- they've got very similar pulses going on i think well, also, you gonna be, you Michael... gonna the ocean's 11 to fucking break richard kelly out of director's jail <laughs> yeah, for that please. <laughs> george cooney please do that i think michael Sarah was a treat in this as he well. was oh, right we and haven't Alan. seen him much lately and i thought he was great and it was just right. you know what's funny it was just michael Sarah doing michael Sarah stuff and i'm like that's it's what still, i like you yeah. know what i mean like there, there you go is. but yeah, exactly. I, I will say it had been a while since it's... i'd seen him do michael Sarah exactly because i will say i was getting pretty tired of it mm-hmm. uh you know he's a funny dude but that is a he's you know the the fucking john kale of the acting world man that is one note just humming along for 45 minutes but really funny in this movie that you know and mckinnon i thought was really funny too yeah um i think the hardest i laughed i've laughed in a theater in a long time is uh i will just say the 90s pop song needle drop that we get uh of uh, you did without spoiling what that that is and yeah, sure. how, they, how they use it I, yeah they're talking yeah, my, about it in the chat it is yes. it is fucking hilarious the beach is just really when they're on the beach and yeah Jan is doing it i that was probably the hardest i've laughed in a long time so there you go can i tell you uh the, the funniest so we were uh, yeah uh, you know our crowd was great mm-hmm. um yes you know celebratory you had all the dress up and whatnot um you know women like decked to the nines fabulous gay men just out and about and then like beards like me you know there with my wife and everything just duding it up but the guy in front of us it was a real treat to behold this guy sitting there for this movie that he like clearly this was not his first choice to go with his lady friend to the theater and when i tell you and this isn't a spoiler or anything but like they make a really solid fucking Snyder verse joke in the movie. This dude in front of me, you can see him slump down in the chair. Even the even the lady friend, dude, the lady friends like patting him on the shoulder, like, oh, don't get mad now, don't call this. And I was like, I am sitting behind the biggest fucking loser in this theater right now, Primo. <laughs> yeah, let, let's see uh, the Justice League Zack Snyder cut do these numbers at the box office. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would not have. Oh, that's uh, amazing. It was, it was oh, mm, sweet, sweet shit there. Um, I loved all the stuff with them like going to and from Barbie World and just like that really like intentionally fake old sure. school, like yeah, the, go the this. sky's going yeah. by, you know, mm-hmm. I thought it's just, it's such an interesting aesthetic that again, like I said up top, like I'm just so stunned that Warner brothers, because like, let's be real in their infinite wisdom about everything over the last couple of years was like, yeah, you can do it. Like stunned that some suit didn't get in there and was like, make this look more down to earth or like whatever yes. shithead I mean- note. But the Will Ferrell office looks like a Jodorowsky set. Yeah, like, yeah. Y- y- like it, it, these are not references you usually find in major motion pictures like this. Certainly not ones that make $155 million in America. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. What, Warner Brothers got lucky because, you know, which we'll talk about in a minute, they fucked up and they lost Oppenheimer. You know what I mean? Yes, Oppenheimer yeah. absolutely would have been theirs, um, but they fucked around and found out, but they just mm-hmm. sort of stepped into – 
to gold with this with Barbie, which is it, it's, yeah. a very, it's a very they got very lucky this weekend uh, yeah. in terms of like backing the right horse. I'll now, tell you what. Oh, go ahead, dude. Now, if we'll see if the Daniel Kaluuya gritty meta textual Barney movie <laughs> is going to do these numbers <laughs> and is as well directed we'll see i'm holding out for teletubbies dude (laughs) maybe that's 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 the thing and i mean like i do (laughs) we are now about to enter the metelliverse it's just going to be as stupid as any other verse we're going to be in possibly stupider can i just say possibly stupider and that's the thing is that i mean it's not and it's absolutely not greta gerwig's fault um you know what i mean because it's a great movie and it's got yeah you know great stuff but i mean like we are now going to enter the Metelliverse for fucking real, and you are going to see Rock'em Sock'em Robots. You're going <laughs> to see. I pulled fucking... up the list: Hot Wheels, yes, sure. American Girl dolls. Of course. Look, I'll say this about this: Uno. Oh, if, dude, the oh, Uno, Uno movie. movie. I hope Uno. I get to play eight, please, <laughs> Steve for eight. <laughs> I I will say as long as they do not. If Hot Wheels doesn't enter into Barbie two. I'm fine. Yeah, that's just fair. make your little dumb these, movies. Yeah, yeah, sure. If these totally are just fair. franchises in and of themselves. Like that's the way it looks like Nintendo's going to do it. Like it's just going to be Super Mario Brothers two, and then Zelda. Whenever Zelda happens, will be its own thing. Metroid. Whenever Metroid is thing, will be its own thing. Mm. Like yeah. like that. It was the mixing and the TV ness of it all. Like that was yeah. what was yeah. driving me insane about the Marvel movie. Sure, that yeah. was primo, and the way that that affected how it. Was built dramatically and bit st- built stylistically. It it, it 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 corroded everything. So like, that is what bothered me. If you can just do this, guess what? John Wick just made my favorite John Wick movie, and it's the fourth one they did. Right? So, hey, maybe it's maybe it works if it's just in franchises. This summer, the Hot Wheels cars are getting ready uh, to drive <laughs> on an all new track, and if they're uh, lucky, a certain pink wearing blonde might drop yeah. by to Ooh. wish them well. No, don't do that. Just <laughs> don't do that. And they have to digitally remove the sniper's red dot from Margot Robbie's head when she's acting in that movie. Yeah. So we'll see on all that. I, I will say what is kind of a bummer is like, so Greta like goes and does this movie. I have absolutely no interest and never have in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe shit. Yeah. And I yeah, never I watched care. any of those original movies. Never read the... I, I just don't care. And so this is like... I, I, I don't want it to be one of those things where here's a totally established, interesting filmmaker and she's going off and yep. doing this franchise shit now. I, it's totally I mean, uninteresting to me. I mean, yeah. I mean, this was my least favorite Greta Gerwig movie. Uh, but I do... And I think that Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe might we can have some little women aspects of it you know what i mean because there are some real world depressiony stuff so like you know uh... kids work i mean like it is has a similar tone to it i mean like that's the thing i'm gonna show up for whatever she does exactly like this this has been three things in a row by her that i really like to varying degrees uh and i'm gonna show up for whatever it is we'll see like the the story at this point like a sense so much of it is going to be corporate just or just like literature retreads and stuff like that like yeah. i just have to show up for who's doing it at this point like mm-hmm. like it, because so few, so little of it is the original stuff like it is actual like original ideas being done on a big screen with a big company behind it it's just not you don't see that that often so like i just have to follow the people that's all i can do now mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean i guess we'll see you got something there steve I know who we're following next, Mr. Big 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 Dick Chris Nolan, man. Right? Absolutely. Right. Oppie. Here we go. There, there he <laughs> is. Oppie. Love this guy. Can oh I tell God. you I, if Great I movie. uh you know, I was not prepared for how many times we're saying Oppie in this movie. Oh yeah. And chanting Oppie and the whole time. Because <laughs> Eric, you texted it like before I texted I, saw I texted the, it as, as, a, as a joke. Oh, I was oh just, really? And I I hadn't seen the movie yet. And I was just sort of like <laughs> I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to see Oppie in a minute. And then they started saying, I'm like, did I write the movie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Did I forget I wrote Oppenheimer? I mean, I mean, the whole time during the movie, I was saying it like Wally. I was just like, ah, oh, just like repeatedly for three hours. 
It is great. I mean, the and this is like following the people, like Chris said. Like I, Chris, Chris Nolan did this. I feel like maybe someone else couldn't have pulled this off necessarily as well, Way. and no, make it as riveting as it is. Like I'm like on the edge of my seat. Our like two and a half. Like a, worried about his security clearance. Yes. Uh, the yeah. Thing I think is what really carries this forward. I think RDJ was fantastic. Dude, I yeah. think nomination is going to happen for this performance. It's nice to have him back. I can't yeah. tell you how nice it is to enjoy him in a movie <laughs> yeah. that's not uh, under the, the auspices of the MCU or anything like that. Because it has, I mean, like, people who have seen The Judge will know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> it, 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 it is rough going outside of Iron Man with him lately. and like, Well, this... dude, forget about The Judge. This movie was completely absent of any bad English or Welsh accents that he yes. might be trying to Doolittle pull Doolittle was no lo nowhere near this, thank God. I mean, it was, it was just beautiful to watch him do this kind of stuff again. And he, he, he is absolutely riveting. He's fantastic. I will say, and obviously, I mean, I think uh, Killian Murphy is like, otherworldly good yeah. and like it's yeah. so important to this movie the twitchiness the weird sexiness that he's fucking everybody in that movie My dude favorite... i had no idea oppenheimer dude. was laying this much pipe <laughs> i love at the end it's sort of towards the end of the movie and i'm not spoiling anything like somebody's like but what about that woman what about your affair with that woman and he's like oh her fa her husband never found out it doesn't count before yep. he died and i'm like <laughs> jesus dude yeah Use some for the rest of los alamos but... mr All oppenheimer <laughs> people have been criticizing the sexuality of the film or sex at all being in the movie, nope. but it's like you're making a nuanced portrait of a person and it it's and I think the sex scene is effective for the callback to it in the sort of interrogation kind of scene. He's a sexual yes. person. People are, have sex lives and that's people be yes. fucking. But I'm sorry, people, people, be fucking. people be fucking, but people but even <laughs> at, on like a story structure level, there's a reason for that sex scene that yeah, comes yeah. up well, later. But there is a reason. I mean, like actually, yeah, in the text as well. But like I want to know like so many of the world's like most gravest men were also horn dogs, mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. or and like weird looking guys as well. Like Ooh, Oppenheimer, yeah. <laughs> like you know him as this, like he looks like a skeleton when he says the yeah. "I have become death." You know when yeah, he actually sure. says it on TV, like that to. To know that he actually he just needed to fuck married women like he just <laughs> needed to do it day in day out was his well, real passion. You're gonna have to build world. a you're gonna have to build a town, build it fast. I'm gonna cuck everyone's wives. Yes, yeah. but no, bring their families. I'm gonna fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> but you need, need to bring the scientists and their families. I'm gonna fuck their wives quite, quietly. You know, if Oppenheimer had access to computers and internet, maybe he'd be jerking it more than he would be going out and putting it places. Uh -huh. um, Look, we're gonna we're gonna have a it's gonna be a town. Town swap, you see. <laughs> it's gonna be a town, and then we're gonna swap. Uh, I got I, I think Emily Blunt's fantastic in this movie. I gotta get. I mean, I, I do think that Daddy Junior is gonna be nominated. However, Jason Clark doing Ooh, a, yes. off the top rope. He like doing what he does best, which is being d unlikable. Yes, he yes. finds a way to be in a room with a guy with no fewer than 100,000 fatalities. <laughs> and for you to look at the other guy that Jason Clark is playing, I'm like, fuck that guy. Why is he yep. being so rude to Oppenheimer? I know. You're totally right, dude. And you know, the, it's a masterstroke. But the, the man in the glasses is being <laughs> mean to the fucking mass murderer. Yes. But the way they handle the mass murder is very well. Like yep. the, the whole movie is like a me meditation on like, how horrible this was. Yes. And yes. I feel like there's a lot of misreadings on the internet I was of seeing of, of there people are. people being very sympathetic to the access powers, which that's your choice. Well, that's fine. I, I mean, because I think that's more because like a, a movie must be everything now, right? Like yeah. it, it must also we you can't just make flags of your of of, uh, of, of your father. fathers. You have to do letters from Iwo Jima as they well. They have to be at the same but movie, the, the same time, thing about the that. same yeah, at the same time, I love that Eastwood did those separately. And it's funny you bring that up, Chris, because I was thinking about it a lot after this movie. Those two, I want to revisit. Incredible films, wonderful I, movies. I mean, I, I think that we deal. I mean, like that's what's so great about the sort of last fifty minutes of the movie. It does a turn into a courtroom movie, which is really smart, and it gives the movie an, another engine after the engine of the bomb falling, right. uh, or of the test, and and then the bomb. Um, but 
uh, you know, it, 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 it but it, it's you're struggling with legacy. You know what I mean? And how does this right. stuff get adjudicated through through the courts, through how you know what I mean? Like all these little uh, public and public uh, failures and or humiliations for various characters. I had a question uh, for the group because I was sort of split on this, but I wound up liking it. Uh-huh. Do we, we think it's chicken shit? Because there's only one moment where, and I mean, I, I think so much of the movie does grapple with the horror uh, that Oppenheimer unleashes. It's, it's not a hagiography at all. There's one moment when he's in a in a room where they're showing him uh, pictures, which are, are very famous pictures of the nuclear of what of, of the fallout of Hiroshima and right. Nagasaki. And he, you, you, the, the camera stays on him. It stays mm-hmm. on his horror of what he saw. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's chicken shit to not show the audience that at that moment, or do you think I wind up liking that it, we're because we're so close on him? And I think Murphy again is really good. You, well, you see, yeah. he's yeah. he's dealing with. It. I think well, they that, handled it well. I, I think if you did more of it, uh, shock value, it would have been yeah, it would have been a little weird maybe if it would and that's the th- i think the issue is that you, you have to show an image that isn't the images everybody knows in that yeah. moment like mm-hmm. it right. has to be something that is really new uh and like I, do i think it would have helped if you get one or two font yeah i do think you probably would feel the impact a little bit more i like the reflection after the speech yes. i think that's a oh, much, yeah. a very strong way of dealing with that mm-hmm. uh but would have but this is this is the Nolan thing. Nolan yeah. doesn't like that stuff. He doesn't. Yeah. Well, th- that's why no blood. Like that's yeah. his thing. He does not like this stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's about the inner turmoil of yep. the character for having done this, yes. and and that's I, yes. Thank you. That's also, exactly yeah. right. That's what I was trying to sit here and articulate. But like, if you show those images, then it becomes about that, and that's yep. not what this movie's about. Yep. And like, as people have been helpfully pointing out <laughs> on the internet and in in this very <laughs> chat like yes no shit there are other movies you can go to for that yes. stuff yes and that's it, it, not what this movie is addressing and I, that's why it's I, not there i just want to be clear because be, i i like that decision i wanted to volley that ball so we could talk about okay, it but right, i, I do right, like right. i do like that decision no it's yeah. great and just him just like grappling with the fact that he had basically been responsible for killing so many people but I also think people need to, especially Americans, want to do something this week. Take a, take a, take five minutes out and Google Chinese deaths World War II, mm-hmm. and just check it out. <laughs> to check to, it out to what end? What what should they be looking? I'm for? just saying Imperial Japan was as bad as the Nazis. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's uh, but like it goes more to like what is like. I think it's good to have a little shock of things that brings you like, like this was exactly like my problem with tar, right? Is that it's very hermetic. And like, I think the thing with Oppenheimer, you have to buy into that. It has a similar thing is that it is about this character. And therefore, if something's coming in from outside of it, Mm -hmm. you like, I think that's good. I think it's good to breach that uh, once or twice just to like show that there is a world outside, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't hurt the film to me. Like I I like this movie much more than I like tar. uh, But I love Tar too. I, I mean, tar. tar is great, but like this, Tar was like, my favorite of the other year. This might end up being my favorite of this year. I don't this know. This is my favorite. This is right now is my favorite. It it, it just edged Ooh. out. Bo is afraid as as my f- top. This is tied with Tenet for my favorite Nolan movie. Uh, there are two sides Whoa. of a coin with him. I like. You know, like, Op- Oppie is afraid of uh, this profil- <laughs> profilation of uh, nuclear arms. Yeah. <laughs> it is just, but it's amazing that no one made a drama. It's it, it's yeah. a biographical because he's right. only only done thriller and action movie at this point, right? I mean, you'd have to put them in those buckets. Like, Prestige is a thriller. You call Prestige, uh, yeah. Like I call it, I call it a thriller. Weird. You know, because it's got the twist ending and the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Insomnia is definitely a thriller. Following uh-huh. is a thriller. Memento is a crime drama thriller. You know what I mean? Like thriller, thriller, yeah. thriller. And or action. And this is like the full on, like the pe- nobody fires a fucking gun in this movie. I mean, we dropped the mother of all bombs. We don't even, you know what I mean? Like, don't yeah. need no gun. I would mm-hmm. argue though that it's just as thrilling and yes. way more horrifying than any of his other movies. Like this is a str- I, I was thinking about this like as the credits rolled, like. You know, whatever horror I consume this year, like this is the most horrifying movie I saw this year. And, you know, if I think like if you're out there watching this movie as like, look, they're dramatizing Oppenheimer and getting you to feel bad for him. Go back and watch it again, because I don't believe that's. I think this is just an indictment of this 
this whole thing and mm-hmm. no one is coming at like nolan is not sitting there like we should be kinder to this guy or what no 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 it is mm-hmm. a real fuck all these people fuck their evil fucking yes. hubris like fuck all of them they're all just as guilty and that's what it's like it's kind of funny because like again like eric you said all of that trial about or in a trial like the little hearing about his security clearance like i think part of it like that is such a low stakes thing and it allows you to sort of sit there with everything else because like you don't give a shit if he gets a security clearance Mm. at the end but it allows (laughs) you to focus on like what's being said and in that time i was just marinating in like fuck this piece of shit like i don't care like just the notion of like oh i was just the scientist doing my math and that's just my i didn't know what it was gonna you know yeah fuck you dude fuck all these people rot in hell but i mean i mean fuck all the germans that were researching too and the russians as well i mean but that's this is the thing is like the trick of the movie is is that you do care about him like i i I don't think like i care about him deeply at the end there but he's like oh i'm like but oppie needs q level clearance (laughs) (laughs) he makes you like have that feelings about like the point is like i think of this as a big budget remake of memento in a way is like you you are he finds a way to create this way he's doing it righteously Mm -hmm. like through his like uh, i mean they they talk a lot about how he was uh his jewishness in this uh and that stuff and like there's these building blocks of how you create a narrative where you are doing the right thing uh and they end up being false they may they end up being oases like they are they do not exist and like that is this is that on a big scale, like yep. through science and innovation and all this stuff and like trying to stop what you consider absolute evil, you create something 10 times more evil in a way. Right. Like exactly. And, and, and like that is it's horror. That is true. Horror is because you see a man do that. You don't see some total villain like he's not a cackling anime villain. No. He's, <laughs> like he's uh, he's just like this guy who was obsessed and had a brain for this and, stuff. And- and why Nolan is so perfect for the movie is two things. One, the amount of power and the amount of engagement and the excitement for all of these different moments and all of these different things. Um, and there's never like a bullshit, uh, I was calling it last night, like a house moment where like he's just sitting around like, wait a second. Somebody's like, oh man, it's cold. I'm going to put a jacket on. It's like, what'd you just say? Put a jacket on. We have yeah. to stop the isotopes. You know, run yeah. around and solve <laughs> the problem. You know what I mean? Like you could totally do that. You could, but, yeah. But that's what because the movie knows the bomb is going to drop. The movie expects the bomb to drop. Yeah, it's just the horror of the the march to it. And I think that the, what the Nolanness of it, to your point, Chris, and kind of goes to what I was talking about a little earlier is like everyone's hands are clean the entire fucking movie. No one there's not there isn't a drop of blood, but there are fucking hundreds of thousands dead by the end of it because that's how these people worked. You know what I mean? He was he was in Los Alamos. He never saw fucking, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the actual carnage. He never he never ex- so, so then we don't see it and your hands are clean, but you have to live with the information that he lives with. Yeah. Right. And the way that right. they do like they trick you into like to to like Andrew's point like this was an act of like this is very easily seen as an act of evil. Like mm. what like you when you're watching uh, uh, Killian Murphy talk to ben, uh, Teller Ben Safdie mm. uh, about stuff, you are getting like wrapped up in like the technical talk with them. Yes. What are they talking mm-hmm. about? But yeah. you don't, and then for a moment you forget first that they're talking about what's the difference? Should we make should we make and deploy a nuclear bomb or should we make and deploy a hydrogen bomb? Yeah, is essentially what they're arguing. And like the fact that it is those two things at once, this like monotonous but also rhythmic and intellectual conversation, and also this just discussion of good versus evil or just evil versus more evil, mm-hmm. like is powerful. It's some of yeah. the most powerful stuff he's done ever. Period. Yeah um that like the ending and you know not to, not to spoil too much but like that whole you know the final reveal about like what did einstein say to him and like that final shot oh yeah it's fucking it's bone chilling yeah oh totally. like, like this is a movie that is meant to like take you so far outside of yourself and like look at this planet as a whole and just yeah. and like sit there and think and like that's why like I think part of the the genius of it being three hours is it gives you time to sit there and ruminate on all this while it's happening. And it's like, we are so hyped to fucking kill ourselves and we Mm -hmm. will kill ourselves and not enough people give a flying fuck about it. And like, I was just sitting there getting so enraged watching this movie and I hope other people do too. And I hope, 
you know, one movie's not going to change the world or whatever, but like if more people just kind of thought on the whole about that shit, I'd sleep a little better at night, man. But like as it stands, the night after seeing this movie, mm -hmm. I did not sleep too well. Sure. I was mad. I was fucking terrified because like those people don't care. They didn't care then. They certainly don't care now. And you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Nope. No, yeah, exactly. So it's here now. That's why it's like, I guess we're going to have to do H-bombs and we're going to have to yep. do an arms race now. That Benny Safdie line, like, which is all over the trailer, but like, yeah, like what happens when someone builds a bigger bomb? And all I could think about was like those fucking uh, like Yosemite Sam Looney Tunes where it's like guns going over the planet, you know, mm. arms race, visual gags like that. And it's like, it's it's fucking disturbing. Well, I, mean, and, uh, I, yeah. I think ending on the, the Einstein bit was smarter than the original ending, which was him looking at a, a vanity mirror, looking at his 14-inch cock and being like, you're going to be a star and put it back in. <laughs> God spread in the news. <laughs> I'm fucking your wife. Yeah. He sent that cock through communist channels. <laughs> <laughs> he's just trolling like registries like for newly married people he's just like oh, can i buy you something <laughs> ah, who was your wife oh, <laughs> wouldn't it be great if it was nothing about the bomb it was just, just in the background and oh he's yeah just like just getting it wet all the time oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah totally <laughs> and every once in a while josh hartnett comes out to say hey you know we're working on the yeah th thanks i'm, I'm fucking he was, someone right now he was good too josh hartnett, hartnett. And by the way people yes. wrath of man came out a few years ago he's also very good in that, so check that out. hartnett uh that, this is my favorite betty safety performance probably ever yeah uh, david yeah. crumholtz man crumholtz oh, yeah, is baby. awesome in this movie he is i mean it, it's just wall to wall and emily blunt is fantastic uh yes i think it's, we can't say enough I, that that scene would like she's just drinking and he's like aren't you gonna go to the baby it's like i've been going all day and i'm like yeah yeah she's she's fucking great in the movie i'm seeing a lot of people like females being underutilized in this movie i mean sure but think That's... about the time and the setting of this movie yes yeah, it takes That's place why. in 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 Kendom or the well, Kingdom of Ken or whatever. I mean, it's and I, I'm glad that the the movie is as to be quite honest, as white and as male as it is, because a that's how this shit worked, and b like yeah. if we did a race blind kind of cast where like you don't care, blah blah blah, I just want to have really diverse and interesting actors in the movie, it it lessens the effect of it that, lessens the indictment. It, it lessens yeah. the indictment, especially of the of the 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 cheer cheering rally scene you know what i mean like yes. that if, if yes. that is like a beautiful array of diverse americans that were never fucking in los alamos you don't get what you're getting which is like this cheering whiteness stomping their feet you know what yep. i mean absolutely i mean it, but it's it's always been his weakness like it, it's fine to, and it's fine I, to me it's fine it's the same thing with michael mann michael mann has struggled for a long time to have a meaningful female character like mm -hmm. it didn't happen till later and like i think emily blunt really picks up the slack in the latter half of this yes, that was, i was yeah. worried in the first part because she wasn't being used i thought that well she was for like scenes like the baby scene like you got these little cuts but you didn't get her to really punch and then she yeah. gets the scene where it's her and oh, um, yeah. uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Jason Clark, where she yes. just absolutely pummels him. Oh, dude, she fucking no, tears. That. She tears that tree down. So, so, so you good. Add stuff like that, and I think that like this is an advancement. Like Nolan has these weaknesses. It's okay yeah. to look at these as weaknesses yep. that he's going to work on. Hopefully, who and, knows? And should he restructure it and completely fumble the ball, doing something he necessarily might not be the best suited for? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he would have done better. Like I, I. I I didn't feel like that was missing. Like we get, I thought the scenes with Florence Pugh are very, very uh, affecting. Yeah, I was I really haunted by them all. Yes. Uh, even like she's it, like a specter, like yes. haunting the whole movie. I thought um, she, it really it worked. It all worked for me. Uh I, oh, the glove scene, the glove shot. That's gonna be. I mean, that's one of those Nolan things. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, maybe. You know, I you know that's gonna be one of those like you're jogging back on on blu-ray to to check out what's going on there but i thought that was kind of an interesting like sort of put that in um the old the old timer that's part of the committee there uh love, love I was, that guy dude but this guy was so old i was like was he some dude like involved in the project or something like <laughs> I, no the, they're the, all <laughs> the last living yeah. no they all got radiation poisoning and died <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. the cafeteria the last cafeteria worker they just got him to hang out there that's what i want i wanted you know i'm, I'm glad that the movie just ends and there's not like 
J. Robin, uh, Robert Oppenheimer yes, no, died, but yeah, you know both. none of that shit. Well, uh, there's no yeah. super text at all. There's no 1941. You don't, you never know what time it is <laughs> yeah. until you have you have to kind of pay attention and be like, oh, this is the, this is before the war. This is after the war. This is you know what I mean, and like yeah. all that stuff. Also, by the way, the black and white is stunningly beautiful yes. on 70 yes. millimeter. Right. Oh Ooh, my god, boy! I mean, the it whole movie is beautiful, but the black and white is like. Ouch! That looks they good. had to create special film stock, special black and white IMAX 65 gauge film stock mm. for this movie. That's, That's crazy. Mm. Um, I will say to the fucking uh, the booth team at uh, AMC Lincoln Square, clean the fucking gate in your projector. There were dust bunnies all over the screen. Oh, really? I was bumming hard, man. At first, I was like, "Is there like a bug like <laughs> stuck?" But like you looked, and it was just like dust here and there and like listen you don't want to be damaging these prints folks so clean up your act down there get some white gloves on there have been numerous reports of like uh, problems with the those screen with screen 70 millimeter screenings no one knows how to project anymore yeah. exactly actually, like that's that's it's a staff issue it just seems like yeah. i'm not yeah. i'm not i'm not i'm definitely not the guy to know this but i i i thought it looked great i, I at least at the village east i don't know uh if great. anyone else can yeah, confirm no, or mine, deny uh, mine, mine looked great uh it's why i i really you know i didn't go down to the brooklyn alamo to see it on 70 millimeter there they um don't appreciate real projectionists in the same way uh so yeah no it just yeah there was just some dust but no overall it looked amazing mm -hmm. and you know like i said i was i was front row <laughs> i was front row imax and it you could it was a movie you could feel uh it was it was incredibly immersive and i think like for a movie like that, you need to you need to be immersed, and oh, I was yeah. I was in it. I was in I it to win it. I think he does that well from the beginning too. Like I, I think a lot of people have been talking a lot about once they get to Los Alamos, and once that really firms up. Uh, yeah. But like I thought the stuff of him uh, at uh, when he's still at college was phenomenal. Like the little yeah. cutaways to the particles and the real like oh all that stuff sense yeah. of what, what him building who he is and his, his his ideas about science and physics and all this stuff like that i thought a, they handled it very very well it was a more interesting look into the quantum verse than ant-man and the wasp quantum yeah, for <laughs> sure <laughs> like quite some measure, yeah. oh that could have been the genie that you can't get out of the bottle anymore he finds little ant-man and stuff <laughs> and it's just like oh no <laughs> uh but you know what i think we could we could be here for another few hours the length of oppie talking about uh, mm -hmm. these movies we saw this week but we want to cut it here folks um and yet just as a reminder first of all this is the last of these uh for several weeks we're going on break uh on screen live will return uh sometime in the oh, thing we froze. started oh. this right. year what am i here yeah, you froze uh, for you're a frozen for a second. Oh, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, no, uh, what I was saying was uh, this is going off the air until September. We'll be back. Uh, but, you know, this kicked in as like a thing. We sort of started last fall and then like in earnest really kicked in uh, in January. And it's been growing excrementally, uh, exponentially ever since. And, you know, really appreciate uh, everyone coming in on Mondays to watch live and everybody who catches the replay on YouTube or downloads the audio. You know, it's been really awesome uh getting getting to do this new branch of of what we do here so that's really cool uh but going into the final week of the season here on we hate movies now out on the patreon of course where things are going to continue through august we do have uh an episode of the nexus which was out uh last week be sure to catch up with that and then tomorrow dropping on the main feed folks the season finale of season 13 <laughs> Kev Costner, the postman. We finally did it. Eric was thrilled to talk Eric's about one so of his happy. favorite. Movies. I made them watch it. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did. <laughs> you, Eric. you know what? Oppenheimer, the better three-hour movie. I'll say. Oh that. wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's, I agree. That, bold, bold decision there. That's yeah. fair. Um, yeah. Stunningly, this episode though still about forty minutes shorter than the postman. That's um, what you want. <laughs> so that's coming out on Tuesday, and then on Thursday on patreoncom slash we movies an all new uh animation damnation we will be talking about gremlins secrets of the mogwai uh now this was I, i'll say it's a cartoon i didn't hate i actually no, kind of it, enjoyed watching it's kind it. of a we <laughs> like yeah. animation yeah. watch, watch yeah. it watch it now before they get rid of it uh, <laughs> yeah. i'm sure <laughs> for the, the tax, tax man, right the tax man <laughs> takes it yeah exactly right get to hear james hong in all his fucking glory uh and then on friday uh of this week we'll be dropping the July edition of the Gleep Glossary. And Eric, who mm -hmm. are we talking about? 
Uta Guta Han Solo, right? Boom. Uh, there he yeah. is. Yeah. Look at that casual son of a bitch in that I picture. I love him. Love this, it. It's a big fat gleep for to end the uh, week out with. It's, yeah. I think it's over an hour, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Please tune in for that. Now, even though the postman, oh, go ahead, Kevin. Well, it's also I want to point out it is also a, a backdoor episode, a backdoor pilot of sorts <laughs> for, next for, week, a next for a character named Galandro, mm -hmm. who is very important <laughs> and oh, you need to know about. Galandro right. will appear in August. <laughs> yes, uh, and speaking of that, like even though uh, the main feed uh, is going dark with in studio episodes. All through August on the main feed, we'll be doing our usual summer uh, live episode releases. So and stay tuned for those. And you, Steve, I know you're 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 getting to it. Do it, dude. Do it. No, yeah. Well, well you want to listen to all of those in studio those uh, those That's live right. episodes because one uh, has an actual live VHS trailer game, which does shift the balance of power within the Marvel universe. <laughs> and uh, and the finale, the last episode of that, uh, which is Universal Soldier, will have the actual. VHS trailer game finale where a winner is crowned and we find out what episode we're going to redo to come back in Ooh, September. That's yeah. right. Mm -mm -mm. Nice. And just to, to clarify on that, now that was not, we didn't do VHS trailer game in Phoenix when we did uh, Unisol. This is an oh. in-studio yes. right. bumper that we recorded uh, just last week. Mm. Um, wild finale of the VHS trailer game. Uh, and so, yeah. And in August, by the way, we will be dropping a in-studio episode on the Wheel of Movies feed on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Sorry, folks. Yeah, that's right. It's that's time. Happened, 1990s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We Hell recorded yeah. that episode already. It was a lot of fun. Tune in for that. And also tune in for the return of Once in a Lifetime, where we're going to be talking about the weird Facebook thriller uh, <laughs> Killer profile, aka, do you trust your boyfriend? Uh -huh. And you got to be careful, Eric. We don't want to get sued. It's not Facebook, it's flashback. flashback. <laughs> flashback. <laughs> so, yeah, we're taking a break, which means we're not going to be recording stuff, but we have so much shit jammed up and ready for you. You're not even going to notice we're gone because we're Absolutely. not going to be. That's right. That's yep. right. Uh, but we will be back here uh, in September with all new on screen live, uh, covering movies trailers box office and a whole lot more uh but thanks so much for tuning into this initial season it's been a lot of fun uh and until september i've been andrew jupin steven sadak eric siska chris cabin have a good august folks bye-bye